So the championship season may now be underway, but that's not to say that the rumour mill has slowed down. We've got plenty of done deals to talk through, as well as a bunch of transfer rumours to go ahead and dive into as well. As always, do get your thoughts in the comments down below. Any other rumours that we miss out in today's video, do let me know about them as well. But without any further ado, let's hop over to some done deals. We saw Cardiff City completing the loan signing of highly rated youngster Jaden Philogene Bidens from Ashton Villa. We did see some glimpses of him in the championship last season with Stoke, played 539 minutes for them and excited to see how he gets on over the course of the year for Cardiff. We saw Rina Kadra completing his loan move to Sheffield United. I think we all knew that this one was on the cards for quite some time but this one has now been finalised. Had a really good loan spell with Blackburn last season and we looked to add a little bit more of a creative spark to the Sheffield United side. My team professional then completed the loan signing of Alvaro Fernandez alongside Troy Parrott. We got to see each of them making their debuts against Wigan at the weekend and for Fernandez especially, really excited to see what he can offer us over the course of a full season, really highly rated within the United Youth Academy. Alex Bass completed the move over to Sunderland. He's joining them as a backup goalkeeper. We've seen Middlesbrough completing the signing of Tommy Smith on a free transfer. He had been training with Middlesbrough for quite some time, so we always thought that this one could be on the cards, but he gives them a little bit more depth on that right-hand side. Teo Doromola completed his move to Coventry City on loan from the season from Crystal Palace. He gives them a little bit more depth on that left-hand side. Rotherham completed the signing of Lee Peltier. He's coming over on a free transfer after spending the last season with Middlesbrough. On the previous video, we spoke about how important it was for Middlesbrough to get some of their striker targets over the line, and they have managed to land a deal for Brentford striker Marcus Force. We did see him out on loan in the Championship during the second half of last season with Hull. Didn't end up being the best of loan moves for him in terms of a stylistic fit, but in terms of the football Middlesbrough are going to be playing this season with that forward too, someone like Marcus Force has already showcased from his time at Brentford just how deadly he can be if that right supply is there, which we'd imagine it would be this season at Middlesbrough but after this one we still expect them to be quite busy in the market and particularly after the sale of Marcus Tavernier now I have to admit when Bournemouth sort of announced their interest in Tavernier earlier on in the window I didn't think this move would go through I thought the Borough would be quite firm in sticking to their guns because they've been financed so much with the offloading of Jed Spence and that money coming into the club that I thought they'd um, be quite tight on this one but in the end the money that Bournemouth were putting up for him turned out to be too good to turn down it's even more money that's coming in to Middlesbrough for this summer so a few more gaps that they need to go ahead and plug with this one now Borough fans how big of a loss do you think Tavernier will be to this season? Theo Cabino completes the low move over to Blackpool for this season looks to add a little bit more for them in the final third he's coming over from Wolves for the season and we have unbelievable transfer story surrounding Blackpool coming out over the last week. They would agreed terms and a deal with Oxford for midfielder Cameron Brannigan who had been a long term target for Blackpool. As several windows going back now they have been linked with the Oxford midfielder so clearly this is a position that Blackpool is still looking into strengthening, adding a number, another number 8 into the side. Everything had been agreed with him until the last minute U-turn he headed back to Oxford and ended up signing a new 3 year deal with them as they went ahead and match the terms that Blackpool had offered him so massive blow for Blackpool here losing out to one of their primary targets as has been the case with a few of the people they've gone in for in this window so far but yeah be interested to get some Blackpool fans reactions to that one in the comments. Another target that Blackpool missed out on was Ellis Sims he completed the season long loan over to Sunderland the striker had previously played at Bloomfield Road had a good loan spell with them back in League One. He's completed the move over to Sunderland though he'll look to add a little bit to their forward line. Reading completed the design of Mamadou Loom who's coming over for all the season from Porto on a loan deal potentially with the option for Reading to go ahead and buy come the end of the season as well. Looks to be a player who will add a little bit more physicality into that Reading midfield which was in need of a little bit of a beef up to be honest but definitely a player who's got pedigree about him coming from Porto. Speaking of pedigree we saw Mario Gaspar completing his move over to Watford as well. We did speak about this rumour on a previous video but this one has since been confirmed. Blackburn completed the signing of Liverpool youngster Tyler Morton who joined them on loan for the season. Generally speaking, I think Blackburn have played the loan market fairly well over the past few years in the championship and this looks to be another example of that. And we saw Birmingham completing the signing of Christian Bielik on a season-long loan from Derby County. Some seriously impressive business 
from Birmingham in this one. I'd imagine that a few of the clubs vying for a place in the top six might have been going in for Bielik. Obviously, the sticking point with Bielik is his injury record. You know, he's had two major injuries whilst at Derby. Um, throughout his three seasons there um, with Derby, he's only started 44 championship matches, which averages out to around about 14 a season, which isn't great. However, when you do get him fit and on the pitch, he is for me, one of the best holding midfielders in the championship. So for Birmingham to have that for this season is absolutely unbelievable. He's also got the potential to drop into the defence as well and play centre-half. So yeah, big question mark if Birmingham can get him consistently on the pitch or not. But if they can, they've got a serious player here. Blobbin Rovers have gone ahead and completed a deal for Peterborough United attacking midfielder Sammy Smodix. And I'm a little bit conflicted on this deal really. I'd be interested to know what Rovers fans think of this one. Last season in the championship I thought that Smodix very much blew hot and cold I wasn't massive um, on him I thought he was fairly inconsistent throughout that year for Peterborough scored six goals got one assist and certainly had his moments but at 26 years old and for potentially over that two million mark I think that's pretty pricey um, if I'm being honest although Peterborough always tend to get a good valuation and um, when they do go ahead and sell players they certainly don't get ripped off in that regard and maybe some of that money will be tied into add-ons and things like that so it very much depends on how much money Blackburn are paying up front for this one really and how much the overall package is worth but yeah Rovers fans I'd be interested to know from you guys what you make of this one for me seems a little bit pricey there we have it though guys those are some of the transfers which have gone through over the past week if I've missed any out do let me know about them in the comments down below now without any further ado let's hop into the rumours and Blackburn have also been linked with the move for Blackpool's Josh Bowler there were some rumblings coming out about a potential two million pound bid but that's since turned out to be false information but Blackburn's interest in Josh Bowler very much seems to be real at this point in time now if I was a Blackburn fan and I was you know behind the scenes at Blackburn I'd be absolutely all over this deal well Josh Bowler only scored one more goal than Sammy Smodix did last season in the championship Bowler got seven I think you get in overall a much better player um, and a much more complete package and at a younger age as well Josh Bowler is only 23 years old Blackpool are in an interesting situation with him because he's only got one year left to run on his deal at Blackpool so if they did want to cash in on him this summer would be when his values um you know most hot but we saw back in January them not knocking back some offers for Bowler so they've obviously been quite keen to keep hold of him whether they can go ahead and time down to a new deal or not I'm quite speculative over from Bowler's perspective he might be you know happy to sort of wait out this contract at Blackpool and then get a massive signing on fee uh, next summer when he's allowed to leave on a free uh, Josh Bowler was the best dribbler in the championship last season completed more successful dribbles than any other player I thought on the opening weekend against Reading he looked like probably Blackpool's most dangerous player in terms of those dribbles getting shots away and things like that so, yeah, he'd be a brilliant move um, for a side like Blackburn. It remains to be seen, though, what sort of money Blackpool will be wanting for him this summer. And we do now have clarity on the Cameron Archer situation at Aston Villa with Steven Gerrard confirming that he does want Archer to be in and around the first team this season which will mean no low move will be sanctioned for him this summer. Plenty of championship clubs had thrown their hat in the ring for a potential low move for Archer. My side Preston obviously being one of them after how ruthless he was in front of goal during the second half of last season. Uh, a few of the parachute teams also interested in Archer but because of how how well he's gone to perform in pre-season for Villa and then as of right now not bringing in another striker it seems like Gerard rates Archer quite highly and I'd say he earned this crack um, for sure at the Premier League maybe if things don't go to plan in January could be made available for another loan deal if he's not getting that regular game time but as things stand right now he will be an Aston Villa player this season it looks like Reading are in talks for Amari Hutchinson on a loan deal from Chelsea I'd be absolutely all over this deal um, if I was Reading really up and coming promising player came up through the Arsenal Youth Academy was recently signed for Chelsea if you head on over to the Planet Football YouTube channel I recently did a reaction on Amari Hutchinson and some of his um, highlight reels throughout his youth career and by all accounts looks like a really uh, good technical player got a wonderful left foot really good creator and finisher as well and certainly would be a player who I'd be keeping an eye on if that championship low move does go through Reading have also been talked about in a potential deal for Charlie Kirk as well this one would be a loan deal in Reading's current situation 
situation. We did see a little bit of Kirk in the Championship last season with Blackpool and that would be another option for Reading if they were still looking to add more depth into the wide areas. Now Sheffield United already have one Manchester City youngster on loan for the season in Tommy Doyle and they've also thrown their hat in the ring as they are interested in James McAtee along with several other Championship clubs. Uh, Sheffield United still very much keen to add a little bit more flair and creativity to their side. Someone like McAtee would be a really interesting addition to a Championship club. As of right now he's made six senior appearances for Manchester City but at 19 year old at 19 years old you'd imagine that that next stage in his development probably would be a lone move out to the championship and we could be seeing Seth Vandenberg back in the championship after all unfortunately for me it won't be in a Preston shirt of, as Burnley have now joined the race as interested in the young Liverpool centre half um, as well as Burnley Bar FC Basel and Bournemouth have also been linked with a move for Vandenberg who is said to be currently weighing up his options as Liverpool are going to sanction him to go out on another loan move for the season um, honestly Vandenberg speaking as a Preston fan was someone who really grew um, into that role during the course of his 18 month loan spell with Preston North End and as much as it pains me to say it, I think he'd be an absolutely brilliant signing for Burnley particularly with what Vincent Company asks from his centre halves you know he's very comfortable on the ball very intelligent reads the game very well comfortable playing as a centre half or um, pushed out onto the right hand side as well he's quite happy to sort of wander forward as well and he does also have a goal in him so yeah judging off how Burnley are going to play this season with a lot of possession they need their centre halves to be comfortable on the ball. Vandenberg would be a brilliant pickup for the season, but oh God, it would it would hurt to see him in the Burnley shirt after loving him at Preston for so long. And another player who looked to be on his way to Burnley is Manuel Benson, someone who will look to add a little bit more flair and dynamism into the final third as he's coming over from Antwerp once again. Vincent Company using his connections within Belgium uh, had a decent season the last time round for Antwerp, scored five goals, got six assists in the Belgian league. And the first taste we got of Vincent Company's Burnley side was really quite promising with what we saw on Friday night against Huddersfield but they are clearly still trying to add a few more goals into the final third there and Middlesbrough have already been turned back for a bid for Hull defender Jacob Greaves reportedly so around about that 5 million mark Middlesbrough obviously as well as adding a striker or two in the remainder of this window still keen to add a left sided centre half and Jacob Greaves I mean fits down to a tee what they're after in terms of centre half at this point in time. Hull are in an interesting situation with him. Obviously, they've already lost Keen Lewis Potter from this window, and his contract situation makes this one a little bit of a sticky one, perhaps, if he's not willing to extend at Hull. I believe his current deal at Hull runs out in the summer of 2023, but the club does have an option to extend that by a further year. Now, to let go of both Lewis Potter and Greaves in the same window, with all the overturn they've had in this window, you know, losing Honeyman as well would seem a little bit foolish, probably, from Hull's perspective. So, I'm sure that they'll be more than keen to keep him around that's been seen by them knocking back a bit of around about five million for him but all themselves no doubt need to get him tied down to another long-term contract because i mean in terms of potential he's right up there with the best in the championship right now and birmingham reportedly hold an interest in derby county's jason knight we've already seen birmingham get one deal over the line for a derby player this week with christian bielik coming in on loan whether or not they have the finances to go ahead and fund this move on a permanent basis it remains to be seen but the interest is reported there. Knight at Derby currently has one year left to run on his current deal. Did feature for them at the weekend. But guys, there we have it. That will wrap it up for today's video and for today's transfer rumour roundup. As always, any other rumours or completed deals that you've seen that we didn't mention in today's video, get them down below and we'll give them a mention in the next one. Apart from that though, guys, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you all in the next one.